In activity four, we're going to talk about finding measures of central tendency. Um, the easier name for that, as you probably know it, if you go back to grade nine math, is the mean, the median, and the mode. And I know that you've spent some time finding those values and doing those calculations in grade nine. So this is really just an extension of that topic, and I think you'll find it quite easy. So just to review, the, um, the mean is the arithmetic average of all the values. The median is the middle point or the halfway point, just like the median going down the middle of a highway. And the mode, which sounds very much like the word most, is the one that occurs the most frequently in your values in your data set. We're going to talk first about the mean. And the mean is just the arithmetic average. And the way that you get the mean, the easiest way to calculate that, is for us to sum up all of the data values and then just divide by how many there were. So if I gave you a list of 10 numbers, you would add up all those 10 numbers and divide by 10. Now we're going to write that in some notation that looks a little more complicated than it really is. Um, here we are again with the summation notation. There's sigma. And it's telling us to add up all the x values from the first one to n, which is the number of x values that we have, and then to divide by that n value on the bottom here in order to get our mean. And so that's the way that we have always found averages. And if you look over at the second formula here, it's exactly the same thing, but you'll notice that the n is a capital N on the top and the bottom. The other thing to notice is the difference between um, the symbols that we're using. On the left hand side they've got the x bar and that's how we, um, that's actually how we say it is x bar. On the right hand side they've got another Greek symbol for us to use and this Greek symbol is actually pronounced mu, like a, like a cat, mu. Um, and the only difference between x bar and mu in, in the little n and the big n is that those things signify whether or not we're working with a sample or a population. And so if we're finding the mean of a sample, we're going to be finding x bar and we're going to be using little n. If we're working with the mean of a population, meaning that we've got the data for the entire population, we've been able to do a census and count everybody, then we're using mu and we're using capital N to denote the fact that we have values for every single thing that we can count in that particular uh, survey. So in example one, we're just being asked to find the mean of our sample test scores and they've given us five scores, five numbers, so we start off by realizing if we have five things that n is equal to five. We just add them up and divide by five and we end up with a mean of six. And in this case, um, we're told in the question that this is a sample. Oops. And so we're using x bar and little n in our formula to show that we know we're working with a sample. Now the weighted mean is a little bit uh, different. What the weighted mean is really is a shortcut to finding the mean when you have multiple values um, that are equal, like uh, values that are the same. So in the formula that we're looking at again, it looks a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but you notice the similarities between the mean formula. Again, we have x bar and we have mu depending on whether we have sample data or population data. And we've got w times x and w times x in our formula. And all that means is that if we have, say, you know, four values that are all equal to five in our data set, it's quicker to just say 4 times 5 and than it is to write 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So the weighted mean is really just a shortcut. 
Here's an example of when we might use a weighted mean. We have a frequency table similar to what we were making in the previous section. And when we count up scores, we notice that we have multiple values for the same score. There were 7 scores of 7, there were 12 scores of 50, 36 scores of 55, and so on. So from our frequency table, we've organized a large amount of data. And when we're asked to find the mean of the data, it's much quicker to just multiply 7 times 45, 12 times 50, 36 times 55, than it is to try to write out 36 values of 55, 55 plus 55 plus 55 plus 55, and so on. And again, we have our total for n given by the total of the frequencies in our chart. So it makes it really easy to work with a large amount of data and find the mean very quickly. In the content section, you'll find a little did you know excerpt. And here they're describing another little shortcut. And they're explaining that if you're going to be feeding all these numbers into a calculator, you don't necessarily need to write out a whole bunch of calculations. You just need to indicate what you're doing. So one shortcut is to write a plus and then to put dot, 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 and then another plus with the very last calculation. You're showing that there are calculations in between that are not being indicated, and then you're going to do those on your calculator and give your final answer. And that's a perfectly acceptable way for you to write your solution. In example three, we have a table where we've done a frequency table, but we've done it by intervals rather than exact values. So when we've counted up our intervals, we've used a bin size of five here, and we have four values that fall into that bin, and then seven values that fall into the next bin, and so on. When that happens, we need to approximate the value for each bin, and we're going to take the median value for each of these bin sizes. So we have 150 to 155, and so the mean value there is 152.5. That's the halfway point uh, in that interval. We're going to do the same thing for all of these other intervals that are shown. And so here's our chart with all of the um, medians drawn in. Those are going to be the values that we use. And so we know that this value won't be exact when we find our mean because we're approximating each of these intervals to have one exact value that we can use. Now we're going to proceed to find the weighted mean by taking 4 times the uh, midpoint, 7 times the midpoint, 18 times the midpoint, and so on, and adding all those up. And when we're done, we're going to divide by 50 to find our weighted mean. So here's our calculation. Again, this time we're using mu because we've got all of our data from the population as opposed to just taking a sample. And we're finding the weighted mean. We've shown a gap in our calculations to make it easier to write out all of our work. We're dividing by the sum or n of all of the data pieces that we have, in this case 50. And so we end up with 8,225 divided by 50 and a weighted mean of 164.5. Now, notice the little squiggles before the 164.5. That symbol in mathematics is meant to show that that's an approximate value. Sometimes you're going to use that symbol. You may have used it before for things like rounding off. Um, in this case, what we're indicating is that we know that the weighted mean is not exact. Um, but that it's close to the value and that it's the only method that we have to calculate the weighted mean when we're given an interval um, frequency table.